Hi everyone, Spider-Man1991 here to talk to do another movie review, and this one is about X-Men First Class. Okay, as the name as the name implies, it's an origin story. It tells the story about how Charles Xavier for, formed his first team of X-Men along with Eric Lushner, who would one day, who eventually becomes Magneto. Um yeah, basically the story is set in the 1960s. It shows Charles Xavier Xavier get uh, just earning his professorship, and he gets called in by the CIA to investigate this group called the Hellfire Club, who are secretly who are secretly influencing the actions of the U.S. government and the Soviet Union to build to bring the two closer and closer to starting World War Three, which at the time was would have ended with the whole la launching of no multiple nuke nuclear missiles. So anyways, Charles gets recruited by the CIA along with his foster sister, Raven, who is who is also known as, better known as Mystique. Uh, Charles met her when she was really young and she split, and he caught her stealing food from a kitchen, from his kitchen and he decided to let, and he asked his family to pretty much raise, to pretty much raise Raven as sort of a adopted sister. Uh, oh yeah, wait, uh, spoil warning, this review does contain spoilers. So pretty much, while Charles, it first sees, when Charles first has his run, has his first run with the Hellfire Club while he's worked for the CIA, he meets Eric Lushner, who has the ability to control metal. And he, he convinces Eric to help, to help join his cause since Eric was on his way to kill Sebastian Shaw, who was who was a scientist at the concentration camp Eric was at, held during World War II and he pretty much killed Eric's mother right in front of him to try to get him angry to make him focus his pow to focus on his powers but years later Eric's still tr hunting Shaw down and trying to kill him to get revenge so Eric decides to work with Charles because he thinks that he'll, he'll bring him closer to Shaw so he and Char so Charles and Eric work for the CIA, and they sort of form their own team of X-Men consisting of mutants such, known as Beast, Banshee, and Havoc. Uh, yeah, once the C and once they do form their team of X-Men, they hear President Kennedy's speech about how about the Cuban Missile, which takes place during the actual event known as the Cuban Missile Crisis, and the. And they know that the Hellfire Club is going to be there, so they set up. So the X Men, well, they're not calling themselves the X Men, but for the sake of the review, I'm just going to call the, call the team that. They fly, they fly, they fly over to Cuba, find the Hellfire Club, a fight ensures, and it all and it eventually leads to a confrontation between Sebastian Shaw and Air and Eric. During the fight, though, Eric is able to hold hold back Shaw long enough to get the helmet. Well, well, if, as you've seen from the trailers, Sebastian Shaw has Magneto's helmet, the helmet that was, that can block out telepathy. We still don't know where it came from. All we know is, all I heard Shaw say is that the Russians built it for him. That's it. Like, no real explanation about how the helmet can block his mind. If you ask me, it might be made out of, that might be because it's made out of vibranium or adamantium or whatever the hell fictional metal Marvel invents. Anyways, Eric is able to get the helmet off Shaw, which allows Charles to stop his brain and keep him frozen in place. But Eric decides to seize the opportunity and kills Sebastian Shaw. And if you ask me, though, the moment when Eric puts the helmet on and blocks Charles out of his mind, because Charles is pretty much telling Eric that he doesn't have to kill Shaw, there's another way, but Eric doesn't believe him. He only wants revenge. And Eric's revenge is also... And, Eric's tre and Charles' treatment of Eric is also... What makes him, what makes Eric sort of decide that he doesn't want what happened to, he doesn't want to see another concentration camp. He thinks that if he doesn't act now, then eventually humans will try to keep put mutants in camps and try to kill, execute some of them and stuff. And so he decides to take action, and he um and he sets a bunch of and when the U.S. ships and the Russian ships fire their missiles at it, at Eric, he starts to deflect them and turn them back toward the ships but but Charles's love interest Moira CIA agent Moira McTaggart she fires a gun at a gun at Eric and he's 
and it breaks Eric's control briefly so that the miss missiles don't hit the ships, and while he's deflecting bullets, one of them hits Charles in the back, and that's what paralyzes Charles Xavier. And needless to say, from there the film ends with Magneto forms his own brotherhood, and Charles is, opens his own school and start and decides to keep and starts to form his own X Men. <sighs> okay, that was probably a longer summary than what I said about Thor or any of the last three movies I reviewed. But anyways, I thought the movie was amazing. Uh, James McAvoy as Charles Xavier and Michael Fassbender as Eric as Magneto were brilliant. I, both actors were amazing. Were the perfect choice. Were really the perfect choices for their role roles it was a good movie if i would say this and also the night the setting of the 60s the director had the director matthew vaughn he had a good idea about setting it in the 60s and he really recreated that atmosphere with the cuban missile crisis and and most of the costumes and the atmosphere of the movie was def makes well the atmosphere of the movie makes you feel like you're watching a bond film from that era <laughs> It really does feel like a Bond film, especially with Kevin Bacon's portrayal of Sebastian Shaw, who he stated in an air, Kevin Bacon stated in an interview that he had no intention of playing Shaw like a Bond villain, but if he did, then that was purely subconscious. And I have to say, though, Sebastian Shaw did sound a lot like a Bond villain during this movie, but I'm not complaining about it. It was amazing. Okay, cam okay, now for cameo time for Marvel. Uh like X-Men Origins Wolverine, there was no Stanley cameo. There was no Stan this is I think this movie and X-Men Origins Wolverine are probably the only Marvel movies that don't feature a uh, cameo by Marvel creator Stan Lee. But on a, but on a more positive note, there is when Charles is uh, using Cerebro for the first time and you can see all the all the people who are mutants. There is a cameo by a younger storm, younger version of Storm, and I thought I saw a younger, a uh, young Cyclops during the Cerebro scene, but those are more of blink and miss cameos. I think the cameo that everyone loved was Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. Yeah, I thought this movie was going to be Wolverine free, but I was wrong. Wolverine makes appearance for only about thirty seconds. When Charles and Eric are trying to recruit mutants for their for their team, uh, they walk through a bar. They see he they see Wolverine at uh, at the bar. He's just like smoking a cigar. They introduce themselves, but he tells them to f off, and they leave after that. <laughs> okay, um, like I said at the beginning, though there was Charles does get paralyzed and. That is a big continent, and I think most people who've seen X-Men Origins Wolverine and the three X-Men films probably think, probably know that that's a continuity error on their, on the, on the crew's part, because, well, towards the end of X-Men Origins Wolverine, which is set, I think is set in the 1970s, Lo, uh, after Lo, while Logan and Sabretooth are dealing with Baraka Pool, uh, the mutants that were ca captured by William Stryker escape, and they're being and they're being guided out by Charles Xavier and Char and Professor Xavier reappear, and Professor Xavier, who's played by Patrick Stewart, has a cameo leading the student coming out of his the X jet, and he's able to walk. So yeah, what up with that? And also in X Men at the beginning of X Men Three. Magneto and Charles Xavier are both are both still sort of allies or whatever when they see Jean a young a young child Jean known as Jean Grey and again Charles is walking. So again, I gotta ask, what up with that? I mean, don't get me wrong. I do know in the comics that Charles Xavier, that Professor Xavier has regained his legs on a number of occasions. Just recently, it was it was when Wanda Maximoff, aka the Scarlet Witch, altered reality and reduced the number of mutants that allowed Professor Xavier to have his legs back. Okay, what else? What to say? Oh yeah, this will be. Fox has stated that this will be the fir the first part of a new tr trilogy of X Men films. 
I really look forward to a sequel. I hope they do make the next two movies, and they are j just as awesome as this one. And I have to admit, though, that this movie is awesome, and it really makes up for the mistake of X Men Three, and the ending go and Deadpool's role in Wolverine. So yeah. Oh, my rating of this movie, I would give it five out of five stars. It is awesome. So if you get the chance, if you want, so I'd say. It, this weekend, actually this weekend Green Lantern comes out, so, yeah, this weekend if you're unable to get tickets to Green Lantern, go see X-Men First Class because it is amazing. And that's all I have to say, Spider-Man 1991 saying see you later.